I'm Chief Cheryl Victorian. This is Waco PD on the beat. Whether it's crime or just getting to know the Waco Police Department, we're here to talk about things that matter most to you. Hello, Waco, and welcome to Waco PD on the beat. I'm Sierra Shipley, the public information officer for the Waco Police Department. And I'm Officer AJ Smith, the Crime Stoppers Coordinator for McLennan County. And thank you for joining us on this episode. We've got a, actually a pretty heavy episode to talk about. Yeah, usually we, we joke around, but today's a pretty serious topic, I'd say. It's very serious. We have our Assistant Chief Frank Gensch here on with us today. Thank you so much You're welcome. for joining us. And we're here to talk about gun violence, gun-related crime. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have seen quite a bit of increase in the last year over yes, we have. gun-related issues, whether it be discharge of a firearm or it has to do a little bit more uh you know criminally as far as maybe a murder um so it uh just some serious stuff we got to get into yes ma'am so let's talk a little bit about just the first you know what when we say gun violence what are the types of crime that we're talking about well we have several offenses in the penal code that an individual can face if they discharge a firearm one of them is disorderly conduct then we also have discharge of firearm in a municipality, deadly conduct, aggravated assault, manslaughter, and murder and capital murder. So it, you know, it seems like it starts out small, but you know, discharging a firearm can result in the death of somebody. Right. And so, you know, the discharge of a firearm is is a very dangerous act when it's endangering others and not, you know, when you're out at the firing range or, you know, out hunting. We're talking about discharging in a municipality. Right, right. And I feel like that discharge of firearm, we see a lot of those calls, especially around those midnight hours. Yes. Uh, And and usually uh, it it might be someone just thinking, just goofing off, you know, just shooting it in the air. Um, It could be a a targeted thing where it's, um, you know, uh, at a vehicle or a house. Um, But explain that it, it's very serious uh, when, when you're shooting off a gun in any manner. Yes, it is. I mean, we have folks that, like you said, late at night, whatever the circumstance may be, decide to just discharge their firearm into the air. And they don't think about the consequences of what they're doing. Number one, it's a criminal offense. And secondly, and more importantly, that projectile that's leaving that firearm, you don't know where it's going to land if you're just shooting it in the air. The velocity that that bullet's leaving that weapon going up into the air, even if you're shooting the gun straight up, (coughs) that velocity of it going up is also there's going to be velocity coming down with gravity. People have literally been struck and killed by a weapon that was discharged in a celebratory manner straight up in the air, and the bullets come down and killed an innocent person. Right, right. And and uh, w- when you say celebratory manner, it shouldn't be in a no. celebratory, you know. But that, no, that's, not that's at all. But people, used, have, but people have used firearms as if they're, they're discharging fireworks, and it's not. Both are illegal in the city limits of Waco, mm-hmm. but discharging a firearm puts more people at danger than, than folks realize. Even when they're stepping out on their back porch, you've got mm-hmm. houses and neighborhoods all around you. And that, f- that, what, that bullet could go through the ceiling of a house at the velocity it's traveling, depending on what kind of weapon it is. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, we have been, I think, thankful in, in, in our community for the amount of calls we're getting of this type. And we, we don't see injuries. And, and so we're, we're, we're grateful for that. But we want to talk about this as we see the increase continue, because as the increase continues, we're not going to be so lucky. No. I mean, unfortunately, eventually... We are going to have an innocent person sh- shot or killed by this manner of discharging in the air. And we need our citizens to be mindful of that. And we just want to put out that warning that this is a very dangerous practice. And we don't just have the discharging of firearms in the air. We have active cases where people are intentionally targeting other people over a beef about something. And using a firearm to do that, to scare somebody by shooting up their house and causing property damage, you may think you're scaring them, but what happens when that projectile penetrates into that house and strikes a child sleeping and kills a child, not even the intended target? And, and, and people aren't taking that, and these young folks that are getting a hold of firearms and trying to settle the score with somebody, 
they're not thinking ahead about the consequences of their actions. And it's a very dangerous practice. Yeah, and that was kind of leading into the next question, which was the intent of these uh, discharges. Are they, you know, are, are, is it a targeted incident? Are people just, no one's going around shooting random people. And, but we, we have not had any random shootings at this point, and we're blessed with that. But the problem is, like you, you're asking, is yes, we have targeted shootings where, again, somebody's got a beef with somebody, and they, they're either seeing them on the street and they're in another car, and they're shooting on a public street at that person from their car. You've got other unintended targets that could be struck, innocent people that could be struck by that. We are taking these offenses extremely seriously, and we're addressing them through aggressive investigation, through working with our judicial system, and, and getting severe prosecution for these type of offenses. So you've mentioned that how aggressive our tactics are in going after these. So what are some of the repercussions people can face? Well, depending on the nature of the offense, if it's a disorderly conduct discharge, which is the lesser of the offenses that we've talked about, that in and of itself is punishable up to 180 days in jail and a fine up to $2,000. The other offense that is not as, I hate to say, so. I'm Chief Cheryl Victorian. This is Waco PD on the beat. Whether it's crime or just getting to know the Waco Police Department, we're here to talk about things that matter most to you. Hello, Waco, and welcome to Waco PD on the Beat. I'm Sierra Shipley, the Public Information Officer for the Waco Police Department. And I'm Officer AJ Smith, the Crime Stoppers Coordinator for McLennan County. And thank you for joining us on this episode. We've got a, actually a pretty heavy episode to talk about. Yeah, usually we, we joke around, but today's a pretty serious topic, I'd say. It's very serious. We have our Assistant Chief, Frank Gensch, here on with us today. Thank you so much. You're welcome. For joining us. And we're here to talk about gun violence, gun-related crime. Mm -hmm. uh, we have seen quite a bit of increase in the last year over yes, gun-related issues, whether it be discharge of a firearm or it has to do a little bit more uh you know criminally as far as maybe a murder um so it uh just some serious stuff we got to get into yes ma'am so let's talk a little bit about just the first you know what when we say gun violence what are the types of crime that we're talking about well we have several offenses in the penal code that an individual can face if they discharge a firearm one of them is disorderly conduct then we also have discharge of firearm in a municipality, deadly conduct, aggravated assault, manslaughter, and murder and capital murder. So it, you know, it seems like it starts out small, but you know, discharging a firearm can result in the death of somebody. Right. And so, you know, the discharge of a firearm is is a very dangerous act when it's endangering others, and not, you know, when you're out at the firing range or you know out hunting. We're talking about discharging in a municipality. Right, right. And I feel like that discharge of firearm, we see a lot of those calls, especially around our, those midnight hours. Yes. Uh, and, it, and usually uh, it, it might be someone just thinking, uh, just goofing off, you know, just shooting it in the air. Um, it could be a targeted thing where it, it's, um, you know, uh, at a vehicle or a house. Um, but explain that it... It's very serious uh, when, when you're shooting off a gun in any manner. Yes, it is. I mean, we have folks that, like you said, late at night, whatever the circumstance may be, decide to just discharge their firearm into the air. And they don't think about the consequences of what they're doing. Number one, it's a criminal offense. And secondly, and more importantly, that projectile that's leaving that firearm, you don't know where it's going to land if you're just shooting it in the air. The velocity that that bullet's leaving that weapon going up into the air, even if you're shooting the gun straight up, <coughs> that velocity of it going up is also there's going to be velocity coming down with gravity. People have literally been struck and killed by a weapon that was discharged in a celebratory manner straight up in the air, and the bullets come down and killed an innocent person. Right, right. And, and uh, when you say celebratory manner, it shouldn't be in no. a celebratory you know, but that, no, that's how No, not that's at all, but people used, have... But. People have used firearms as if they're, they're discharging fireworks, and it's not. Both are illegal in the city limits of Waco, but discharging a firearm 
puts more people at danger than, than folks realize, even when they're stepping out on their back porch. You've got mm-hmm. houses and neighborhoods all around you. Mm-hmm. And that, f- that, what, that bullet could go through the ceiling of a house at the velocity it's traveling, depending on what kind of weapon it is. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, we have been, I think, thankful in, in, in our community for the amount of calls we're getting of this type. And we, we don't see injuries. And, and so we're, we're, we're grateful for that. But we want to talk about this as we see the increase continue, because as the increase continues, we're not going to be so lucky. No. I mean, unfortunately, eventually... We are going to have an innocent person shot or killed by this manner of discharging in the air. And we need our citizens to be mindful of that. And we just want to put out that warning that this is a very dangerous practice. And we don't just have the discharging of firearms in the air. We have active cases where people are intentionally targeting other people over a beef about something. And using a firearm to do that, to scare somebody by shooting up their house and causing property damage, you may think you're scaring them, but what happens when that projectile penetrates into that house and strikes a child sleeping and kills a child, not even the intended target? And, and, and people aren't taking that, and these young folks that are getting a hold of firearms and trying to settle the score with somebody they're not thinking ahead about the consequences of their actions. And it's a very dangerous practice. Yeah, and that was kind of leading into the next question, which was the intent of these uh, discharges. Are they, you know, are, are, is it a targeted incident? Are people just, no one's going around shooting random people. And, but We have not had any random shootings at this point, and we're blessed with that. But the problem is, like you're, you're asking, is yes, we have targeted shootings where again, somebody's got a beef with somebody and they, they're they either seeing them on the street and they're in another car and they're shooting on a public street at that person from their car. You've got other unintended targets that could be struck, innocent people that could be struck by that. We are taking these offenses extremely seriously and we're addressing them through aggressive investigation, through working with our judicial system and, and getting severe prosecution for these type of offenses. So you've mentioned that how aggressive our tactics are in going after these. So what are some of the repercussions people can face? Well, depending on the nature of the offense, if it's a disorderly conduct discharge, which is the lesser of the offenses that we've talked about, that in and of itself is punishable up to 180 days in jail and a fine up to $2,000. The other offense that is not as, I hate to say, severe, but where you're just discharging the firearm in the municipality. If you're charged with discharging a firearm in a municipality, such as just firing it up in the air or there's no intended target, then you can face up to a year in jail and a $4,000 fine because it's a Class A misdemeanor. And then you get into the more serious offenses, you know, where you're looking at felony jail time. And, you know, if, if it's a capital murder committed in the course of another felony, I mean, you're looking at potential death penalty cases. Right. So you've got a whole, you've got a series of offenses that as we investigate these crimes, we determine the, the intent of the discharge and we determine what charges to bring against the person responsible for the discharge. And, and we're charging to, to the fullest extent. To the fullest extent. Again, we're collaborating with the judges to set high bonds to keep these folks in jail. We're collaborating with the McLennan County District Attorney's Office. With them reviewing the cases and with our detectives and investigating the cases and reviewing those cases, we're getting arrest warrants and we're seeking the strongest po- prosecution possible and the maximum punishment possible for these offenses because it is a very dangerous practice and we're getting too many people getting damaged property Mm -hmm. and getting injured, shot, and killed. Right, right. and I think a lot of that too is kind of uh, the, the, you know, ricochet effect is that you're someone just shooting off like we said, but we've seen where businesses are, are getting bullet holes in them for not a reason that they were being targeted, but just that it was the, you know, cause of just shooting a Stray bullet. Yes. One of the incidents happened in West Waco, 
and uh, a vehicle was shooting at another vehicle, more than likely a uh, targeted person because they were chasing them before they discharged the firearm, and a bullet went into a business. Now, fortunately, that business was closed at the time, but think about if that business had been open and someone had been in there. Mm-hmm. But we, we truly are getting lucky where we're having these instances where people are having these targeted attacks without thinking of the consequences, and we got lucky that the business was closed, or that person got lucky that you know they didn't face a, a more serious charge. Mm-hmm. But you know, it's something that, like you already said, we've got to take seriously. And what can the community do to help us with some of these cases? Well, the first thing we need is our <clears throat> community calling us when they hear a discharge that they know is a discharge of firearm, not a car backfiring, not fireworks calling and reporting that into us with the direction they think it came from. If they came from within their block, down their block, tell us that. Or if they actually see an offense occurring where a firearm's being discharged, whether it's at another house, another vehicle, or whatever, getting the best description they can of the shooter and the vehicle that's responsible. The most important thing off the vehicle to get for us is a license plate number if they can do that. Another thing is... We have a camera initiative in the city of Waco. And if people would register the ring cameras or any security cameras that they have that are facing the public areas, we'd appreciate that. And they can do that on the city of Waco webpage. There's a link under the police department where they can register that they have those type of cameras that might be of assistance to us. Right. And of course, you know, if the officer's out there investigating it and you see them out there, tell them, hey, I've got ring camera video or footage of this incident or I've got security footage of that incident, and we'll be glad to download it. We don't have to take your equipment. We've got folks that can download those that footage and use it as evidence in a case. I think I've seen a lot of, too many times really, is people will post on maybe a neighborhood page that Mm -hmm. says, did you hear gunshots? Yeah, I just heard gunshots. Yeah, I heard them too. But then people ask, did someone report it? And everyone says no. And and they say, well, I didn't know really the direction of where it was. Uh, If people don't know the direction, they heard gunshots, is it still worth calling in? It's It's still worth calling in because it would put officers in the area if there's an issue or situation that's going to continue, like a disturbance going on, it would put officers at least hopefully close in the area where they heard that yeah. discharge, and we'd have marked units out there looking around. And so please call when you hear those discharges. <clears throat> Another thing that the citizens can do to help us out is we have a lot of issues with the firearms that we're recovering on the street from individuals that are being arrested for criminal offenses or stolen. And we're finding that, you know, our criminals and our folks that are engaged in activity where they're retaliating, they're not going to, you know, your, your, your department store, or your gun store buying a gun. They're buying them off the street. They're stolen guns. Mm-hmm. And we have a lot of stolen guns that are occurring in the city because, number one, people are not locking their vehicles up. And two, they're leaving their firearms in the vehicle. Whether the vehicle's locked up or not, a firearm should not be left in a vehicle, even when locked, because folks are breaking into the cars and they're looking for things like that. Mm -hmm. And if you have a firearm in there, they're going to steal it. We're asking our citizens to remove their firearms from their vehicles and take them into their residence and secure them safely in their residence. Don't leave them in the car. Uh, Again, it's it's been a big issue, too with weapons stolen out of a vehicle. Even if that gun is hidden, yeah, don't just don't do it. That's correct. Even, and people yeah. think they have all these great hiding places in cars. You don't. The criminals know where to look in cars. They know where people like to hide their valuables. And it's, it's not a good practice. Carry your valuables in along with your firearm, but more specifically with this issue, we need <clears throat> those firearms locked up inside. And another thing that they can do is keep them locked up where teenagers, if you have teenagers in the home or other adults in the home, cannot get their hands on your firearm. The last thing you want is your firearm as a law-abiding citizen to end up out on the streets, even in the hand of a relative or a friend, and being involved in a criminal offense.
And you mentioned, you know, taking them out of your vehicle. If one gets stolen from you, report it too. I was talking to a detective and they were basically trying to backtrace the owner of a firearm that was recovered. And he's like, oh yeah, that got stolen a couple years ago. So as soon as it gets taken, let us know. Yes. If you have a firearm stolen, please report it with the make, model, and serial number. And it's very important. If you buy a firearm, whether you bought it in a store or illegally from a friend, record the make, model, and serial number. So if it's stolen, Mm -hmm. we know that it's stolen if we recover it off of somebody because that's an additional offense, you know, if somebody's in possession of a stolen firearm. So, yeah, we just need our public's help in this, this effort to combat, combat, you know, the crime of gun violence in the city of Waco. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because uh, we, we see it increasing, and we, we don't want it to get worse. We don't want those worst-case scenarios to happen. No, we don't. We, we, we are very fortunate that, you know, an innocent child hasn't been struck by gunfire at this point. But, you know, I hate to, you know, I hate, hate to think that would ever happen. But if the gun violence continues as it is, there's that possibility, and nobody wants to see that. You know, our officers don't want to be working those type of calls, and the citizens don't want to hear that a child's lost their life because of a reckless discharge of a firearm or by a drive-by shooting. Yeah. So, you know, we're trying to curve this. That's why, you know, we're, we're making a very big push. That's why we're collaborating with the district attorney's office, the judges, to keep these folks in jail, and the detectives. I mean, they are aggressively investigating and following up all leads in reference to these type of offenses. Mm-hmm. Well, I think when people find themselves victim too, they're almost scared to report it. Well, and, and that becomes an issue for us because we'll have people that report that their house got shot up or their car got shot up, but they won't share with us the information about why they think it happened. We need their cooperation. We need victims of offenses that are afraid to know that we're there to help them to protect them, and to get those responsible put away in jail. If they would cooperate with us, giving us what the motive may be, even if they know exactly who it was, we've got people that won't tell us because they're afraid. Mm -hmm. Tell us. Tell us. Help us work the case, and we'll get that person or persons put in jail and kept in jail with high bonds and vigorous prosecution. And, and for the people that are afraid, they can report to Crime Stoppers, especially if you're Always. a witness to it. You can, if you're a witness to one of these shootings and you're afraid to say something because of fear of retaliation, you can anonymously report it to Crime Stoppers. And if that tip you provide leads to an arrest, you can get paid for remaining anonymous yes, and so help his investigators in the same process. And we encourage that. You know, my investigators are working really hard. We need the citizens' cooperation in providing us that information that will help us solve these crimes. That's, I mean, that's the bottom line. We need to be working with our citizens. We want to work with them, and we just need their help. Because if we have those victims not reporting, and if we have witnesses that are seeing it, but even not taking the step to call Crime Stoppers, that's going to slow us down, and we may have an unsolved case where we really, if you see something, say something whether it's to the police department directly through calling us or whether through it's whether it's through crime stoppers would you say that that is one of our cuz our investigators they're great investigators they're great at their jobs but is that one of our biggest pitfalls is just the lack of information it it is at times you know the detective they know i mean you know you have a you got to have probable cause and i don't want to get into the law but you got to have probable cause for an arrest warrant they may have an idea who's responsible and we know that the victim or one of the witnesses knows who's responsible, but unless they provide that information or unless we collab- collaborate it with another piece of evidence, you know, we're not going to be able to make a case. So it's very important for the witnesses and victims to cooperate and tell us exactly what you saw and who it was, if you know. Mm-hmm. Don't be afraid. We're going you know, to make the arrest. We'll get them off the street. And don't think that somebody else is going to say something so you don't need to because that little difference in how you say it versus someone else says it could help lead the direction of the investigation. Especially when there's an incident that happens in a large crowd. Everybody sees something a little bit differently. 
Everybody picks up on something differently. Nobody in that crowd may know the guy's name or the girl's name, but based on descriptions, based on something specific the person said that one witness may have heard what was specifically said and another one may not have, you put all those pieces together and it helps develop that suspect. And so it's very important for witnesses to always come forward when they witness a criminal offense. Right. And, and we want to work with the community, and we need the community to work with us in, in that same aspect. The police department can't. We really, you know, if you think about it, mm-hmm. we can't do our job without the cooperation of the public and the public working with us. They provide so much value to us solving criminal offenses, especially witnesses, especially providing things like ring cameras. Right you know, or security camera footage. I mean, working together, collaborating together as a community of officers and citizens, we can decrease the number of these offenses and hopefully prevent an innocent death. Right. Save a life, basically. Yeah. So we've, we've talked about a lot, and we've explained this a little bit, but why is it such an important topic to discuss? Well, because you can't, we cannot adequately, adequately describe the trauma that some of our citizens go through, the victims of these offenses. You know, whether your house is shot up or a loved one has been shot or shot and killed, that trauma is something that we can't or the citizens can't adequately understand. But there's also trauma for those innocent people out there that are living in a neighborhood that they think is safe and peaceful. They're woken by a discharge of firearm, whether it's just somebody shooting up in the air or shooting at, you know, another car. I mean, the tranquility of that neighborhood in their mind is, am I safe in my neighborhood anymore? I never thought it would happen in my neighborhood. And that's the thing. This could happen in any neighborhood in the city of Waco. Rich, poor, east, west, north, south. could happen anywhere. So we just need everybody working together through the tips that we talked about, securing your firearms, reporting what you see, registering, you know, the cameras and cooperating with the police to help us decrease gun violence in the city of Waco. Because all all we want to do is protect the community. And in doing that, it's going to be working with the community, having you guys work with us. Uh, The Neighborhood Camera Initiative, if if you guys wanted to sign your ring cameras up for that, and businesses can do that as well, right? Yes, yes, businesses and the public. Yeah, if you have cameras pointing in a public space, that can be wacopolice.com is where you can find and and register your camera. Is that something that that we just know that a camera's there and a detective can go see it? The detective, they, they get a list and they can go review the list. And if they see an address near where they need footage from, they may reach out to the citizen of the business and ask to review their footage to see if that, that evidence will help them with the case. Right. So it's not the, a constant, we're not watching those No, no, we're always. not watching their cameras. We just, we create a list, a spreadsheet. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Well, good. Th- thank you so much, Assistant Chief. We appreciate you on here. Anything else that you'd like to say before we wrap this up? No, we just, you know, we're just working strongly and hard to decrease this violence. Thank you. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us on Waco PD on the Beat. I'm Sierra Shipley, the Public Information Officer. And I'm Officer AJ Smith, the Crime Stoppers Coordinator for McLennan County. Have a good one, Waco. Till next time. Waco PD on the Beat, the heartbeat serving you.